I'm in my newly built small shop and I want to get on with building some cabinets, workbenches and storage so that my tools have their place rather than just being a big inefficient pile on the floor. Before I do though, I want to make three cut quality upgrades to reduce tear on on a couple of my machines. With my table saw, I'm going to replace the stock throat plate with a zero clearance one. Then on my Capex miter saw, I'm going to make another zero clearance insert and pair together with a sacrificial fence that will also be zero clearance. I'm going to try to make all three cuts out of this single piece of two inch rough sawn maple. After milling, I'm going to resort to thickness for the first time on the table saw. Then the plan is to use my Shape Origin CNC to do the cutouts. As always, there are multiple ways to make the same parts in the workshop, which will be led by what machines and tools you have on hand. For me, currently in my shop, the table saw and shaper seem to be the best option. Let's see if I'm right and if I can pull off the techniques that I'll be trying for the first time. First up, I needed to do a rough cross cut of the stock board with the jigsaw, but quickly realized that they don't call it hard maple for nothing. My blade would have ideally been longer, but I managed to get it through it eventually. I then took my rough piece through the jointer and then the planer to a point where it was flat and square. Given the height of the piece, I needed to build an auxiliary fence so I could resaw properly supported. This was easy enough using some ply off cuts, which I dimensioned and then joined with glue and brads using some right angle clamps to keep everything square. To resaw, I fitted my 24 tooth flat top ripping blade and did multiple passes rotating 180 degrees each time, keeping the same face against the auxiliary fence. Initially, I was using a double height featherboard on the infeed, but noticed that the board was walking on the outfeed, so split the featherboards. Although not recommended, it worked well enough in this case. The idea here is to leave maybe an eighth of an inch connection, which you could then quickly saw through. Using a clamp here would definitely make it less awkward than it was for me. With the pieces resawn, I needed to take to target thickness using the planer. For the table saw insert, I had to use a sled as the target thickness was less than my planer's minimum. If you attempt a similar thickness, just be aware that further movement in the wood is a possibility. Resawing oversize and letting settle for a few days before taking back to the planer would be a safer route for sure. With the blanks at target thickness, next step was to do the cutouts with the Shaper Origin. For the capex pieces, I downloaded cut files from the Shaper Hub. For the table saw, I made a basic model in Fusion 360 and used the Shaper plugin to send to Origin wirelessly. I set up my sacrificial MDF board and resurfaced with the router so that my first blank would be on the same plane as the Shaper tape. With the Shaper tape down, it was a simple case of first doing an inside cut for the screw holes, and then following up with an outside cut for the overall part shape. For the capex fence, I also thought to try out engraving my maker's mark, which worked nicely although using less depth would give it a cleaner result. A quick sand to clean up, followed by a simple wax hole finish, and the parts were ready to be fitted. Given the table saw insert is very thin, I thought to reinforce with some quarter inch ply. With this done, I removed the riving knife and lowered the blade then screwed in the insert and with the saw running, raised the blade to cut through. Last step here was to extend the cutout to make space for the riving knife. I did this with a combo of a pull saw and a coping saw, which gave me a fairly decent result. For the capex insert, it was a simple case of fitting the same bolts as before and then lowering the blade to make a cut. It's a similar operation for the fence piece where you just need to source an appropriate set of bolts. I used some wide flathead bolts for which I modified the base cut file. Once bolted, it was then a quick cut and we were all done. My three zero clearance parts are done and fit well on both machines. I think I was able to pull off the techniques needed to get a good result. When I inevitably need to make replacements, I will do things a little differently. The auxiliary fence and featherboard combo works really well. The issue I had was that the resawn boards immediately cupped and twisted. And although I went over thickness anticipating this, I didn't leave enough to do remilling properly. I would also suggest not resawing to a thickness of less than 10 millimeters and probably leaving yourself at least five millimeters of thickness for remilling. I was able to use the jack plane though to get my boards back to a tolerance I was happy with, maybe a couple of thousands off dead flat. With the shaper, I had read that you needed to get your board to be on the same plane as the shaper tape. However, with my mitre saw parts, I was between five and eight millimeters above the tape and had no issues. With the capex fence, 
I think the optimum thickness is actually eight millimeters instead of the 10 millimeters that I used, as this will give you more clearance for the hold down clamp. Although realize that with the fence installed, you can't rotate the hold down clamp into the optimum position. The cut file I used for the fence, I got from Shaper Hub, but the measurements were not ideal. For future use, I have now taken the time to create a new cut file for this Capex model number, and I've added it to Shaper Hub for you to use for free, links in the description. One other thing to mention is that with the fence and insert fitted on the capex, the dust collection is definitely decreased. You also can't use any of the parts for bevel cuts and only the capex insert for mitre cuts. All in, I'd probably suggest not having these parts installed if you're doing volume work and just keep them on hand for fine work. The finish you get on straight cuts is definitely at another level. And in my opinion, it's worth the time and the materials to make these parts.